Welcome to the um, Study This and That Season 2. And this month, we'll be covering Health Science Series. Um, I'll just let um, more people come in first uh, before we start. So as you come in, um, just for information, uh, we will be having eight universities from Australia covering eight different topics of health sciences in the coming weeks. So this is uh, week one and this is our first series. So if you are um, having following us from season one, welcome back. Uh, now we're currently at season two. So um, today, uh, I'm your host today. Uh, my name is Ku. I'm the country head of AACC Global Malaysia and Singapore. And I have two guests, uh, VIP guests with me today. Uh, I have Mr. Simon Tran. And Mr. Simon Tran is from Macquarie University. He's the International Country Manager Southeast Asia. And I have Miss Sharon uh, from University of South Australia. And she's the International Recruitment Officer. So thank you for uh, being our guest today. And uh, Miss Sharon will be sharing on uh, study in psych for psychology. And Simon will be sharing on chiropractic. Yeah, these two subjects are very popular area that a lot of students actually inquire about. And that's the reason why we have this talk specifically for you. So feel free to ask questions. So there is a box at the bottom, a Q&A box where you can drop uh, your question down there. And uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions um, on the stage or as you go, there'll be uh, some answer, text answer will be answered um, along the way. So don't be shy. No one know who you are when you are actually asking the questions. Yeah, you'll be anonymous. So before we start the session, just want to let you know that ACC is actually the university placement agency that specializes in overseas education. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook via our social channel and also visit our website for more information. And it's exactly 801 now. So um, let's start. Um, are you guys ready, Sharon and Simon? Um, let me let me start the questions. Um, welcome everyone. So uh, my first question. Now my first question goes to Simon. Simon, can you please um, introduce uh, what's chiropractic um, to uh, to help us to, for the audience to have a better understanding? Over to you, Simon. Thank you, thank you, Ku, and uh, thank you for everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, as Ku said, if you have any question, please feel free to pop that in the Q and A. So my name is Simon, and I am the international country manager from Macquarie University. So uh, the big question here is, what is chiropractic? Okay, so chiropractors are uh, is a professor, uh, is a profession that is uh, evidence based practitioners dedicated to addressing and preventing disorders within the muscular skeletal system. So how is it different from physiotherapy? Okay, so uh, basically, you know, uh, chiropractors work directly on your spine. So they will use their technique, they will use their hand to, uh, you know, to manipulate your spine or, you know, your hip system, uh, put it simply. Uh, to help you to release from all the pain that you have. Yeah. Thank you, Simon, for your short uh, and very precise answer. And over to you, Sharon. Uh, Sharon, could you please um, explain to us a little bit more about psychology? Okay, so um, psychology in the simplest terms is actually a study of how somebody behaves, how they think, how they feel. So traditionally what psychology used to be thought of is that it's an art, it's something really fluffy and people don't know. Um, they use simple terms, for instance, like oh, a person is crazy, for instance, to explain um, when something is not right with your mind. But over time, there has been a lot of um, scientific um, discoveries when it comes to psychology. There's a lot more that we know about how the brain works um, and how it actually um, affects or influences our behaviors, um, our feelings, and so on. So a lot of things that we would have dismissed a long time ago um, as something that is just um, or, you know, a person who's just crazy, who doesn't know things going on. Now there are names to those things, things like anxiety or depression or um, any other uh, any other situation or illness that a person has. There are names to it now, even though there is nothing bodily wrong with us, even if it is just in your mind. 
So, in a brief. Ask, uh, thank you. But uh, let me ask because a lot of students, uh, parents, they'll be asking their students, why? Why do I? Why do you want to study psychology? So, uh, do you have an answer? Why should you study psychology? Um, there, yeah. So, the most simplest answer that we would give is that because. Um, what field does not require psychology or what field does not require you to actually know or deal with people because essentially what psychology is is a field that allows you to work with another human being and to understand um, how they are um, how do they think how do they approach situations so in what psychology essentially gives students is flexibility so with psychology you can go all the way to the end um, and become a full psychologist um, with uh, practices that is very entrenched in science or very training based but you can also learn psychology just like an art or as a complement to anything else and work in many other different fields so it's that flexibility that psychology gives you it can be anything and everything all right, thanks, thanks, Sharon. And I'll pass ask the same question to Simon. Right, Simon, why, why do do I do? Why should I choose Chi, um, Cairo, and why shouldn't I choose other health sciences? Can you please yeah. give us some reason? Uh, this is a very good question. I would say that um, degrees or professions in Cairo uh, will give you the opportunity to develop knowledge and also skills in the health science domain, which is similar to any, of course, any health and medical professions. However, uh, for professions in uh, Cairo, basically, it also gives you a very solid earning potential. So according to um, Australian, uh, you know, the wage income report recently, the starting salary for students who study chiropractic in, in Australia is around $81,000 per year, which is really good. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, uh, studying uh, chiropractic doesn't mean that, you know, you have to, um, you know, to stick with offering care to patients but you can also go into other areas such as sports, you know, pediatric or even research. So, of course, like there are many, many different doors that you can choose, that you can choose and you can go into. Yeah. All right. thank, thank you, Simon. Um, please stay with me. And since you are, um, thank you. I, I start seeing um, question, one question for, for you um, on the Q&A. Uh, we'll come to you. Uh, we'll answer your question very soon. So um, now my second question is, will you be able to explain since we are on Cairo, uh, will you be able to explain like uh, what, what sort of thing, what sort of core structures will the student cover when in their five years of chiropractic? Awesome. You, I have yeah. a slide for this. So yeah, <laughs> we can so go to my slide. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm just going to share my screen right now so that we can all have a look at the slides. All right, I'm gonna do a full screen. All right, so uh, are you able to see my slides now? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. All right, so uh, I think I have already mentioned about this. So uh, let's go straight to the programs that are offered at Macquarie University. So in order for you to be, uh, to practice as the chiropractor, you will have to complete at least a five-year program. So this five-year program include a bachelor in chiropractic science and a master in chiropractic. So the bachelor degree is a three-year program, which is a typical duration for a bachelor degree in Australia. Uh, our master program is between two to three years, but if you have undertaken a bachelor in chiropractic at Macquarie or somewhere else, we will be able to reduce that to two years. So the combination of these two is five years. Um, all right, thank you, Simon. And is there, if I would like to web program, any opportunity um, you know, along the way that students will get to do a bit of practical? Yes, uh, certainly. So um, what I'm showing you right now is a typical study plan for a bachelor of chiropractic science. So you can, checks for the first year, the second year, and the third year. 
So uh, in the Bachelor of Chiropractic Science, we offer fundamental health science training, teaching a wide range of diagnostic and you know, therapeutic skills in the context of uh, anatomy, uh, physiological, and biomedical science. Okay, so if you go to, um, uh, basically, if you go, if you have a look at the second year, and also the third year, we have a lot of subjects in, you know, uh, you know, in anatomy and uh, uh, physiological. So um, at Macquarie University, at the bachelor level, you will get the exposure to be uh, you observe and also take clinical placement at the hospital. Um, do you want me to mention about the master program? Because, you know, yeah. basically yes, it's there will be- continuous, yeah. Yes, sure. Yes. Okay, so in the Master of Chiropractic, the clinical is of course compulsory because at this level, it's just one step away for you to become a professional practitioner in this area. So clinical placement is very important. So if you have a look at the study plan right here, you will see that in your third year, there will be a lot of clinical internships. It basically takes a whole year for you to, to complete that. And at Macquarie University, we are the uh, only uh, university in Australia have our own uh, hospital on campus. So what it means to student is you will get to observe, you will get to study, and you will get to do your internships at our clinics on campus. So I will, if I'm a student at Macquarie learning this program, uh, when will I get to crack people's bone? You know, the, the, the Instagram reel that we show the students, some of the audience might have seen it. You know, they, they learn how to uh, fix um, um, patients, patient positions, posture. So yes. will, will they be uh, doing it in the uh, final year of year three or they will get to do it earlier than that? So for bachelor degree students, unfortunately at the bachelor level, uh, most of the time you only get to visit the, uh, you will get to visit the uh, clinics to observe it only, you know, but at the master level, you will get to practice it yourself and it's part of the program. I can quickly show you some photos. I think this one, you know, like we have clinics available on campus that allow students to practice as well. Cool. Yeah, I've been to one of your clinics. Really impressive. Uh, thank you, Simon. Thank you for sharing with us the course um, overview of the course. And let me go to Sharon. Sharon, um, can you please let us know um, if I were to study psychology, what sort of pathway will I, uh, uh, can I choose? Is there, because I know there's special arts, special science, um, special psychology. So uh, which is the best for me? And uh, is that different? Um, yes, so there is a difference um, between the different courses, but to explain that, but I'm going to share my screen as well. Um, I don't have that many um, bright and pretty slides as Simon does, but I'll just show you what the APAC registration pathway is. And I think as we go on, we possibly could also explain what um, APAC is. So essentially to practice in Australia and the rules are different in different countries, right? Because um, the rules for practicing as a psychology in different countries is governed by a psychological body or a psychological science association in each of those countries. In Australia, that body is called the APAC. Um, the Australian Psychological Association. So what they have determined that a student needs to be a registered psychologist is to go through something called a three-year sequence plus a fourth-year sequence or a four-year sequence. Essentially what this means is that you need to have an honours degree or a four-year degree to be able to register as a provisional, um, a provisional practitioner. So you get a provisional registration, but that is not a full registration. So if you have provisional registration, you can't call yourself a psychologist. You still need to do um, the fifth and sixth year, or you would do the five plus one, which is uh, one year professional, master, uh, professional psychology masters, and then you do a one year internship. And after that, you do another one year of supervised practice, 
and then you get the full registration. So after you complete at least about six years of study up to postgraduate level, you will then get a, a registration that will allow you to call yourself a clinical psychologist. So, um, but this is a little bit different than what it would be say in Malaysia or Singapore. And I'll get to that in a minute. So if you're asking, if a student asks themselves, which level should I go up to? What, until what level should I study? It really depends on what you wanna be when you graduate. So if psychology is really your thing and you want to be a clinical psychologist, so because a clinical psychologist essentially is like a doctor, except that they don't, um, they don't actually deal with blood and uh, surgery and all those kind of things, right? But they can still administer medication, they can still do treatment, give you behavioral treatment, um, so on and so forth. Their approach is different, but they're very much like a doctor. If you want to reach that level, um, then you should expect to study the full four years honors degree, get your provisional registration, continue on to do your master's for at least two years, um, and then get full registration to be a clinical psychologist. But if you like psychology, but you don't like it that much to go right up to becoming a clinical psychologist, if you don't want to be responsible for somebody else's life um, by messing with their heads, then students actually get the option that you can actually just do a three year sequence, which is just a Bachelor of Psychology, and they can top that up with any other postgraduate degree in any other field, for instance, if they are interested to do, if they're interested to teach psychology, then you do a Master's of, psych, uh, Masters of Teaching after you do your Bachelor of uh, Psychology. If you want to actually practice it together with law, then you do um, your Bachelor of Law, Bachelor of Psychology, double degree. If you want to actually work in a corporate area, then you can just do your ba uh, Bachelor of Psychology. You can just go into any other, um, into a corporate company. You can do change management. You can do human resource management. And the reason why it's so difficult to say which area you should stop in is because psychology is that flexible of a field. So personal experience, right? So I also did psychology. Uh, my first degree was in biomedical sciences and I did a three year sequence in psychology. I have worked in human resources. Um, I have worked in technical companies doing change management and all the, um, and that area of work. And now I'm working in recruitment. I'm working in the education industry. So psychology is one of those multidisciplinary fields that can be applied in any area. So uh, whether or not you should do the three year sequence you should go all the way to four year sequence, do all the way to the fifth and sixth year sequence to get your registration. Depends on where you want to be and what you want to do with that psychology degree. Right. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll come back to this. Um, so let me just reset the, the, the floor again. Um, now, there is actually a poll uh, at the bottom. Uh, I appreciate if you are the participant, the attendee, if you could actually let us know whether are you interested in psychology, chiropractic, or you are even both. Please let us know so that we can actually send you the right information. Yeah? So please do so as we go on. Now, um, back to Simon. Simon, um, I understand that uh, you are you have one of the you are the only university that have um, um, the hospital on campus, right? Now, besides that, uh, is there any key key facility that you wish to highlight to our audience, or is there any um, collaboration partners that you have for um, chiropractic that you wish to uh, highlight? Uh, I understand you also work with some uh, industry. Um, sports teams? Yes. So um, I would like to provide some highlights in terms of facilities and support that we provide to chiropractic students. So we have one of these best, you know, chiropractic uh, learning labs on campus, complete with like digital technology and enhanced learning. So, you know, now today we talk a lot about, you know, technology 4.0, the industry 4.0. So we use a lot of, you know, technology, digital technology in our system. So we have three different mockery operated clinics for clinical uh, placement and training on campus. And, uh, you know, some of these clinics are not only, you know, based on campus, but they also based on the surrounding suburbs. 
okay? And the Department of Chiropractic, we always organize, you know, industry networking events because we understand that, you know, uh, going to the university is not only about, you know, going to lectures, doing practicals, or uh, learning the materials, but it's also about expanding your network. And uh, on top of that, because we have our hospital, so of course we have the X-ray training facilities, which is super helpful for students in chiropractic. Okay, so I think you did mention briefly about the collaboration partners for students in chiropractic. So um, we do uh, work with a lot of sport clubs because on campus we have uh, an amazing sport and aquatic centers. And uh, this sport and aquatic centers is uh, open to everyone and it's not limited to students. So we do work with this sport and aquatic center to assist them and provide uh, like support to uh, people who are in need. And we also uh, have association with like, you know, nursing homes and also clinics in the areas. Right, great, great. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for sharing. Now, I'm going to ask the same question back to Sharon. Now, Sharon, uh, mm -hmm. as we know, psychology uh, is offered by many universities in Australia and around the world. So um, is there anything that you wish to shout out for um, UniSA in terms of your facility for psychology? Do you have um, um, yes. psychology clinics and all these things? Yeah. Yeah, so um, the campus that you're actually seeing on my backdrop is called the McGill campus. McGill campus is where we run most of our psychology programs. So again, let me share with you my screen to show you the courses that we have. And then I will talk through um, the facilities for each of those programs. So at UniNC, when it comes to psychology, we offer the Bachelor of Psychology, but at the same time, we also offer the Bachelor of Psychology with both counseling and interpersonal skills um, specialization and also the cognitive neuroscience specialization. So for all of our Bachelor of Psychology students or all of our psychology students, we do have our own psychology clinics. So these psychology clinics have got registered psychologists working in them who would supervise all our students. But students actually um, get to do a bit of their placements. They get to do their, some of their practice experience classes um, at this psychology clinics. And this is where they get that face-to-face -face contact with patients um, and they would have some skills which they need to develop as part of their classroom lessons, but they do it in the psychology clinic instead in a face-to-face on-the-job environment. Um, for the cognitive neuroscience, we do have a cognitive neuroscience lab. We do have sleeping labs. We do have chronological labs. Um, and so these are all different labs that um, help with research within that uh, area. For instance, for cognitive um, neuroscience, you do have a lab where you, um, you get connected to the EEG machine and a person would go through different activities depending on what the research is. For instance, if you want to do a research on how anger management or how um, an angry person would react to certain colors, for instance, you connect them up to the EEG machines in that lab and then you would provoke them to see what their reaction is and then check what their vital signs are and all those kind of things. So there are specific labs for different projects or different streams and also for different courses that a student would take. Okay, that's interesting. Sleeping lab. Um, I, I want to try one if I, uh, when I have a chance. Well, okay, now um, let's come to the more um, serious part entry requirements. So I uh, understand that um, in, on this, uh, in today's uh, sessions, we have people who are a SPM and O level, and we also have pre-university students uh, and also uh, some degree and postgraduate students. Now, um, may I know what is the entry requirement uh, for this question, I will, I'll pass it to Simon. Yeah, so what may I know what's the entry requirement for undergraduate bachelor of um, chiropractic? And if I have a bachelor um, in one of the university here, what's the entry requirement to get into the master's program? Yeah, over to you, Simon. Yeah, the uh, very, uh, you know, frequently asked question uh, about the entry requirements. So in terms of entry requirement to our Bachelor of Chiropractic Science, 
um, for Malaysian students, uh, basically for um, uh, STPM, we will look at your best three subjects and uh, the total score would be around nine, which I believe is quite easy to obtain, okay? For Singapore A-levels, we required at least a BBC. Mm -hmm. Okay, and with, with that, may I know, is there any places, is there a quota for this program? Uh, is there a quota for international students? For the Bachelor of Chiropractic Science, we don't have any quota. And from my experience, as long as you meet the requirements, you will be uh, able to get admission into the program. However, for the master program, we do have a quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every year we have roughly around 20 to 25 places that we save for international students. Mm -hmm. So if I am an SPM student, uh, if I'm an SPM student, um, and I'll, I'll be doing a presentation before I get into your program, right? Into a bachelor degree. So is there any prerequisite subjects required um, for them to study? Is there any particular subject that they, they need to study at the pre-university level um, in order to meet your entry requirement into the Bachelor of Chiropractic? Is it maths uh, or science? Any science? Yeah, it would be ideal if you can take science like math our physics before you entering the program. However, it's not part of our requirements that we ask students to have before they can apply to the program. Because at Macquarie University, even in the first year, if you need help with like subjects like math, we also have your support centers that can help you with that. So uh, please do not worry too much about, you know, what you study in your high school or pre-university because I'm sure that you, as long as you have the passion for health and medical science, uh, we will be able to support you in your first year if you have any problems with science subjects. Okay, uh, I'm just going to choose one, um, one student from the um, chat, yeah? Um, she's asking, is there an, what's the entry requirement for Singapore Polytechnic students, poly student? Is there a, a, a do you accept poly student in the first place? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, we do accept students from poly. And um, one of the good news that I can tell you is that we even give them credit exemptions. So if your diploma at Polytechnic in Singapore has similar subjects to what we teach in our bachelor degree, we can give you credit exemptions. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Now I'll, I'm going to come back to um, Sharon. Sharon uh, for yeah. psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the entry requirement for Malaysian student uh, and Singaporean student to get into your um, psychology degree? Okay, so um, the entry requirement for the courses uh, depends on whether it's an honours program or a non-honours program. So essentially, the honours program, the four-year sequence, has got a higher entry requirement. So if you're doing um, STPM or the A levels, then the scores that you require is about twelve. So it's an, there's a way to calculate it. So each A would give you a certain score, your Bs would give you a certain score. So as long as you achieve um, 12 from best of three subjects um, that should get you entry into the program. There are no prerequisites for both Bachelor of Psychology or the Bachelor of Psychology honors and the different streams. However, if you do come from um, a science background, it does give you a little bit of a um, heads up. If you don't come from a science background, you can still study most of it um, through sheer hard work. <laughs> um, for the courses without um, honors, the entry requirement is slightly lower. So for A levels, it's about six. For Malaysia, SDPM is also about six. So um, to give you an idea what six is, it's probably like maybe one A, one B should be able to get you in um, to the program. Um, or any combination of your best of three subjects that gives you about six. Okay, um, thank you. Um, now, um, the next questions that I have for Sharon, um, for the, about the accreditation process. Um, so if I want to be a registered psychologist, um, what is the process um, in, in Australia as well as um, in overseas like Malaysia and Singapore? Okay, so um, let me bring up that slide that I had earlier again. Um, 
because that will help me with answering that question. So um, to get registration in Australia, assuming that you want to go all the way to become a clinical psychologist, um, then all you need to do is to make sure that you do sign up for a four-year program, um, essentially a bachelor's of psychology with an honors year program. And that program needs to be accredited by APAC. So all of UniSA's programs, our three-year programs are a three-year sequence accredited by APAC. Our four-year programs or honors level programs are four-year sequences accredited by APAC. That would give you provisional registration. Once you get your provisional registration, you then go on to do a master's level program um, in any area of your interest. Unfortunately, at UNC, we don't offer a master's level program for international students. Um, but once you complete this two-year program, again, APAC accredited two-year master's, um, in any of these fields, you then go on to get your full registration um, with APAC. Um, for students who intend to take their degrees and go back to Malaysia or Singapore. So currently Malaysia and Singapore, although they do have psychological bodies um, or psychology bodies in Malaysia and Singapore, um, registration is not compulsory. So in Malaysia, there is the Malaysian Society of Clinical Psychology and in Singapore, there is the Singapore Psychological Society. Both of them do um, sort of administer the register for clinical psychologists in both countries, but that registration is voluntary. So if you don't register with these bodies, you can still work as a psychologist, but in Malaysia, you can't call yourself a registered psychologist or a clinical psychologist. And in Singapore, you can't call yourself a registered psychologist. You can, you can still work as a psychologist because there is no rules to govern whether or not um, a person who's practicing as a psychologist is really a psychologist. But to get this registration with this body, um, you would need to have, for Singapore, you need to have accreditation from the university where you're studying it from. So for instance, if you're studying it in Australia, you need to have your full APAC registration or license. Um, and in Malaysia, you just need to make sure that you study up to your master's level course. Anything lower than that, you wouldn't um, be able to register with those bodies. Yeah. Is, uh, does that sort of answer the question? Or yes, that thank you. Question? Thank you, Sharon. Now, um, back to Simon. Simon, I understand that is a chiropractic brought, brought up sorry, chiropractic board in Australia. But um, how about Malaysia and Singapore? Because not that I know of, but uh, will you be able to explain a little bit more how, if a student complete their mass degree and master's in Australia, um, when they come back to their home country or any other country, how do they apply for uh, registrations? Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> So I'm back now. So let me bring back my slides. I did prepare something on this. So, all right. Um, I do have this one. Yes. Okay. So let's start with, you know, registering in Australia. So our programs are recognized and accredited by the Chiropractic Board of Australia. So in order for students to practice in Australia, under the requirements of the AHPRA, which is the Australian Health Practitioner Regulation Agency, they must have at least obtained the master program or prove that they already achieved an IELTS of 7.0 in each band. Okay, and this is the requirement in Australia. From my understanding, there's no you know, official or professional uh, bodies in uh, Malaysia or Singapore that recognize or administer the uh, practitioner uh, of the chiropractors uh, professions. So basically, you know, you can still work in countries, but you can't call yourself a registered chiropractor, similar to what um, uh, the uh, uh, similar to what say before. 
So from my experience working with students, a lot of our students, they uh, um, work professionally in Australia, in New Zealand, and also uh, uh, chiropractic is recognized in countries like Canada or is even in Sweden. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Now, um, I, um, we are almost come to the end um, of the my questions, but there's a lot more Q&A questions waiting for you guys to answer. So, um, okay, my last part of, will be, of this session will be about the career opportunity and the demand. Now, Simon, since you are with, with me now, um, now may I know, um, besides being um, a chiropractic, I know some of my friends who are uh, a chiropractor, they are also running their own business. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so what, what sort of um, career path do you see some of the Macquarie graduates have, uh, have uh, gone to? And, um, and in terms of um, expected salary range, if I were to graduate uh, as a chiropractor in Australia, uh, is there a salary range that you can share with us? Sure, certainly. So I also have a slide for this. So let me show you a slide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's have a look at the slides. All right. So um, to begin with, I just want to uh, share with you some of the quite amazing numbers of achievements that we have. There are roughly around 5,000 registered chiropractors in Australia. And amongst the 5,270 registered chiropractors, half of them are actually graduated from Macquarie. Okay, so the average full-time weekly hours are between 36 hours comparing to you know, 40 hours on average for other uh, professions. And the average starting salary uh, is around $81,000 per annum which is quite high comparing to other average starting salary right now is only around 60,000. Uh, from my uh, experience and also from a lot of research, basically a lot of students, once they finish their degree, they can start uh, you know, working in the clinics. After a few years, they can open their own clinics if they want to. So did I answer your question, uh, Ku? Yes, yeah. yes, I do. Now, um, Sharon, I'll, I'll ask you my last questions before we yeah. start answering the audience questions. Yeah. Now, how about psychology? Um, what sort of starting salary range that uh, a, a fresh grad will be expecting? Okay, so for a student who does psychology, um, the lowest that you probably get is um, about 75000 Per annum. Um, so that comes up to something around the starting point of 6,000 per month in Australian dollars. And it can go as high as 90 plus thousand per year. Um, and that is about 7,900 per month. So, and that number or amount would increase with your amount of, um, like, say, your certification papers that would increase with um, the area where you work in. So, if you go into, like, say, neuroscience, psychology, you'd possibly be looking at more of the 90 plus thousand per annum if you're working just as a psychologist or um, if you're working as a, say, education psychologist, you're probably looking at more of the 80 plus thousand per year. Thank you, Sharon. Now, um, audience, thank you for your patience. Now, uh, I'll come to your questions. Now, I have a question for Simon. What is the future of chiropractic chiropractor in Singapore due to lack of official MOH regulations? Wow, this is such a tough question, Ku. I know that you will come to <laughs> Yeah, so um, I can't really speak on the behalf of the MOH in Singapore yeah. because uh, it's a long fight and it will take uh, some time for them to recognize chiropractor, well, chiropractor as a, you know, official health uh, professions in Singapore, uh, but I know that you know if you earn a degree in Australia, many of our students they open their own clinics and they still do really well in Singapore. So uh, uh, whether you know is it recognized by the MOH or not, I think you know there's still uh, 
the room for the market for students to graduate and have a really good professions in Singapore. But of course, you know, I hope that one day the MOH will approve it officially. So, you know, uh, you know, there will be more students taking on this course and, you know, there will be more people working in this area. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. And um, okay, then I have another question for you. Seems like there's a few more questions for you tonight. So, okay, the next question is, how's the prog um, career progression like for a chiropractor? Now, I, we know that some of the students have actually started their own business. And have you heard of anything else besides that, be besides starting uh, their own business uh, or practicing attached to a hospital or clinic? Certainly. Uh, you know, like if you don't want to open your own clinics or if you don't want to work in the clinics, you can certainly, you know, uh, uh, work with like a sport club. I know that a lot of students, they choose to go to specific sport clubs and become a chiropractor for that sport club. Uh, mm -hmm. Other kind of job is basically you can go into research or, you know, or maybe you want to become an academia and, you know, teach the program as well. So there are many uh, different, you know, opportunities that you can choose after you finish your degree. Right. And now we know that the border has no news about when will it reopen, right? This is a very tough question that I get almost every week. Now, with that, um, how will the students get to do their practical? Because some of the programs that like you mentioned uh, that involve some practical um, training, especially at the postgraduate level, um, how, how do Macquarie, um, you know, at, change or adapt to the current situations can they do it like in singapore and malaysia sure so um at this stage uh, basically the borders are still closed so um unfortunately international students from malaysia or singapore can't really fly to australia uh, we do provide exemptions for students who have clinical placement at hospitals by invitation only so you know if you have secured uh, clinical placements at a hospital or a clinic in Australia, we will provide the exemption to you. However, most of the time, students who, um, who we get to do the clinical placements are third year students. And I know that a lot of our audience right now, like, you know, in high school and looking for opportunities to enter from year one. So my question to you is that uh, I hope that, you know, the borders will open in 2022 so that you will start with us and then you will get to do clinical placements in Australia. I think you are on mute, Aku. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll let you take a, a short break. I'll pass the next question to um, Sharon. Sharon, are you ready to take um, the question from the floor? Now, uh, my questions for you will be, um, now, if I would like to apply for credit transfer for Bachelor of Psychology, Cognitive Neuroscience, after my one year study at any Malaysia university for Bachelor of Psychology, or if I complete a diploma in psychology from any of the Malaysian institutions, uh, would it be possible uh, for, would it be possible for not, I think your, it, Mango is your question saying that can you not, to, can you not selecting your specializations when you transfer? Because uh, I think her question is can they, can she transfer into the bachelor degree if she were to do uh, first year bachelor psychology and or diploma. I believe you do have um, some articulation arrangement with uh, Malaysia local institution, right? Yes, we do. Um, we do have some articulations with local institutions, but even if you are going to any um, Malaysian institution that is MQA registered, so both the university and the course is MQA registered, MQA recognized, um, and you have completed anything that's diploma and above, and you're using that for entry into a bachelor degree um, at UniSC, mm -hmm. if it is a related area of study, mm -hmm. we will um, assess that qualification for credits. Um, you just need to submit your um, transcripts and also your syllabus from the school, um, and then we would assess it to see how similar it is with our program, and then we'll grant you credits as you go. Um, if you're looking for credits, so for instance, if you're doing a very general diploma or a very general um, 
bachelor degree. Um, say if you've just done a diploma of psychology or a bachelor of psychology, um, but you're looking to go into something that is more focused at EMSA, like a bachelor of psychology, neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, for instance, um, then um, the chances of getting a lot of credits is probably lower. So you, you will still get some credits, for instance, like psychology 1A or psychology 1B or um, any of the more um, academic uh, foundation topics. You probably would get credits for those, but you may not get, um, for instance, if you've done three years of diploma, you will not get a full one year of credit from your bachelor degree. Or if you've done one year of bachelor's of psychology, you will not directly get a one year credit of your university program. But will it be assessed? Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Now I have the next questions from um, uh, an audience called Ryan. Uh, what is the pros and cons of the two different psychology pathways um, for undergraduates pathway and the honors degree pathway? Uh, would you like to show a slide so that as you explain? Yes. What is the pros and cons? Yeah. So, um, essentially there are no pros and cons when it comes to which pathway that you are choosing. The pathway um, from uh, the beginning of your psychology degree to the provisional registration is essentially just about the same. The only difference between say starting with a three year sequence or a four year sequence, a lot of times it depends on whether or not you meet the entry requirement because entry requirements for the four-year sequence is essentially a lot higher. It um, can, it, it is like 93, um, if you're looking at the ATAR perspective. Um, but for, just say the three-year sequence, the entry requirement is about 80 or 70 for some of the strings, right? So if you don't meet the entry requirement, you then use the three-year sequence as a pathway. So you do the three year sequence, but anytime in your three years, um, after you completed your first six months and you hit a high GPA. So from your first semester, if you score like say a distinction, a six over seven, you can start to apply for a transfer into the four, four year program. So after your first semester, you can start applying after your first year, you can apply after your um, third semester, you can apply after fourth semester, and you can keep trying until you complete your three year sequence. Right, so it really depends on this on your score that you are getting every semester. If you hit the transfer score, you can apply to go into the fourth four year sequence. Once you complete the three year bachelor's, if you decide, you know, I want to go out to work first, um, see if I'm interested in anything else, and then at some point you realize that hey, actually, I want to be a registered psychologist, then go on and apply for a fourth year sequence, which is just the Bachelor of Psychology honors year. So the difference between this and that is that in this program, the honors year is built into the bachelor's. Um, in this program, the honors year is separate. So you're doing three years and then you're adding on one year. In this sequence, you're just doing it all of it together, right? And then once you get your provisional registration, um, don't look at the four plus two internship pathway because that is uh, not applicable anymore. APAC is retiring that pathway. Um, there are two options. You either do a full two years master's degree in any of this area with this specialization. Um, and once you complete that master's because your master's would have sufficient supervised um, placements um, and supervised hours. Once you complete a two year APAC accredited master's um, with any of the institutions here in Australia, you will automatically be then eligible for the full registration. Or you can do a fifth year. It's like a one year master's, but still an APAC accredited one year master. And then you um, do a one year internship or one year, and then you do a one year supervised practice and you still also get the um, registration. So this whole pathway, essentially, it's just different ways of getting from the start of your psychology degree to getting fully accredited and fully licensed to practice as a clinical psychologist. You can choose to do it all at one go, the straight cut method, or you can actually take a break, go through a different 
longer possibly pathway to get to it. But essentially, it gets you to the same place. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And now I have one more question before <laughs> I give uh, Simon to have a more uh, have a quick look at the Q and A. But I have one more question to you before I pass to Simon. Now, if I graduate with a Bachelor of Psychology orders from UK, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, can I apply for master in any psychology um uh, area, or must I still pursue your fourth year um? Uh, psychology honors in Australia? If we can assess that to be um, equivalent to an honors year, um, an honors degree or a four year sequence. So with the APAC, um, how they essentially look at it as they would look at any degree that you obtain from anywhere, not just in Australia, and they assess it to be whether or not it's a three year sequence or whether it's a four, uh, four year sequence. To be able to get entry into a master's level program, especially master's of psychology program, um, you would need to have a four-year sequence. So for instance, in some countries, they actually call it a Bachelor of Arts Psychology, right? And it could be a four-year or a five-year degree. Um, and well, not just in UK, for instance, I'm going to take a random country like India, for instance. They do a Bachelor of Arts Psychology and sometimes it's five years long, okay? And that would be sent to APAC um, or you would go to APAC and get them to assess that degree and they would tell you, is this a three-year sequence or is this a four-year sequence? If that is considered a three-year sequence, then you still need to do your fourth year sequence in Australia. So actually you need to still do a Bachelor of Psychology honors in Australia before you can do your master's. But if APAC says that that particular degree, whether it's three years long or four years long from whichever country that you're graduating from, if APAC says that, no, this is equivalent to a four year sequence, then you can apply for any um, APAC accredited master's program. Okay, so I'm gonna have my last question to you before I, I ask uh, Simon, right? Is there any scholarship? Yeah. He loves scholarship. <laughs> Is there a scholarship in uni essay? Um, yes, there are scholarships at uni essay. We have got two different scholarships, which is the IMS, the International Merit Scholarship, and also the Vice Chancellor's International Excellence Scholarship. So um, these scholarships are actually, um, uh, so for the IMS, if you're applying for a Bachelor of Psychology degree and not the Bachelor of Psychology Honours, um, you will be eligible to apply for the IMS with 15% off um, the entire duration of your degree if you achieve a credit average and above. Um, again, that would depend on which um, qualification that you're doing in Malaysia or Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, with the VCIES, that is a competitive assessment, um, you would need to hit um, what we call a high distinction um, average which is on a GPA that is like a seven over seven. So if your scores are close to perfect, then you'll be able to apply for the VCIES, but you also need to submit your, um, your personal statements. And then that would be a competitive assessment to see if you get a scholarship. But that scholarship is 50% off the entire degree. Okay. And uh, for scholarship information, uh, we'll be sending to you after the event. So after this webinar, uh, we will compile some of the interesting questions that's asked by the students uh, or attendees today. Uh, we'll put it into uh, a form of uh, email and we'll send to everyone that's attending the, uh, who attended the uh, event today. Now, I'll pass the mic to Simon. Simon, I have um, uh, a lady called Amy. Um, she said, Simon mentioned that there's no prerequisite subject, but mentioned science and physics. Why physics? Also in your core curriculum, students have to take biochem subjects. So do students need to have a good grounding in chemistry? Sorry, I think I wasn't clear on that uh, before. So I just want to clarify that to Amy. So um, basically we don't have any prerequisite subjects uh, for you to apply to the programs. So you can basically, you know, coming from an art stream or you can come from, you know, a business stream or 
a science stream and can still apply to the Bachelor of uh, Chiropractic Science at Macquarie University. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that in your first year at Macquarie University, if you have any problems or if you struggle with these science subjects, we will have support available to you to help you through these uh, first year subjects. Thanks. Thanks, Simon. And the second question from Amy is that for poly diploma students in Singapore, which diploma are acceptable into the Bachelor of Chiropractic Science degree? And, and I, I think you did mention that there's credit exemptions, right? Yes. Yep. So pretty much all diplomas are, accept uh, are acceptable into our Bachelors of Chiropractic Science at Macquarie University. However, in terms of credit exemptions, how much uh, that we can give you, it depends on the program that you are doing in Singapore. Whether it's a science uh, uh, diploma or it's like a business diploma. So, um, you know, um, if it's aligned with what we teach in our first year at Macquarie University, we will be able to give you more credit exemptions. Thank you, Simon. Okay, so my next question is, um, I think uh, is more of a reconfirm what you said earlier. So after completion of chiropractic course, is the degree of master's is recognized in Malaysia or any other uh, countries worldwide? I think you say yes, right? It's just that, um, that there's no board governing them in certain country. Yes, it's correct. Yes. And yeah. uh, you know, after you have completing the master's in uh, Australia, I know that a lot of our students, they, uh, you know, they start working in Australia, New Zealand, or in Canada, in Norway, or in the UK. So, uh, yeah, these are the countries that recognize uh, chiropractors as a uh, professor. Right. I think um, I don't see any more um, questions on the Q&A. Let me just have a look at the um, at the chat in case some student actually put it there. Uh, yeah, I think it's almost there already. Most of the questions we have answered and we left like one minute uh, to one hour. Now we, we still have a 59 um, um, audience with us. Now, um, just want to, if you have any more question, um, please feel free to put it in the uh, Q&A box, you know, um, now so that uh, we can come back to you. Uh, if not, uh, we'll be ending the room um, very soon. Um, so to, to end, um, Simon, um, just want to ask, is there anything that you want to uh, wrap up or do a summary? before we actually wrap up this tonight, tonight's room and while waiting for students in case they want to put in any questions? But yeah, so well, I just want to say thank you to everyone for tuning in today. I think I didn't have the opportunity to um, introduce about our scholarships available to Malaysian and Singaporean sorry. students. Sorry. No, 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 sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's worth to mention that right yeah. now too, we're offering uh, one of the most generous scholarship uh, you know programmed in Australia so we are offering um, the ASEAN scholarship which is valued at ten thousand dollars per year uh, to all students coming from Malaysia and Singapore so if you enrolled in one of our programs in uh, you know 2021 or 2022 you will be eligible for the scholarships so it could be up to forty thousand or fifty thousand if you decide to undertake the package of, you know, Bachelor of uh, Chiropractic plus the Masters of Chiropractic in Macquarie University. Oh, cool. That's a good deal, actually, in fact. Yeah. No, how come I actually missed that out? Sorry, Simon. So, um, Sharon, um, um, uh, do you have anything to actually um, say or, or, or summarize before I actually end the room tonight? Um, well, um, thank you for having me, I guess. Um, and thank you for spending your evening with both Simon and me today. Um, I think if you've got any other questions regarding UniSC, regarding our programs, psychology programs, um, contact ACC. Um, you can also look me up on the UniSC website. Happy to have a chat after this if you've got any specific questions on the course. Yeah. Okay, and thank you, everyone. Um, if you... 
Okay, thank you everyone. And I think there's no more um, question. I don't see um, any more question uh, popping up. But just want to say that uh, thank you for attending the session today. If you have any inquiry, our counselor, our team from Malaysia and Singapore will be contacting you in the next few days. Um, so feel free to you know um, ask any questions. Um, we were sharing you uh, sharing with you about the tuition fees, the entry requirement, scholarships, um, uh, program details. You know um, we'll be sending to you via email. Um, so that if you have any more questions uh, be, after getting our um, extra materials, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We are always available on uh, our website during our office hour and uh, counselor will be WhatsApping you so you will have their um, personal handphone number as well. So we have six more health sciences topic happening on the 17th, 27th of April and 29th of April. So if you do are uh, interested in any other program, please feel free to uh, register yourself and keep in touch with us and follow us on our Instagram and Facebook for more information. So because from time to time, we do shout out, um, you know, Macquarie and UniSA about their uh, latest news as well as their scholarships updates. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Um, thank you, Sharon and hope everyone um, in this room have a great evening. I'll be um, leaving and there will be um, a survey um, when you, and I end the room that we survey form um, pop up on your screen. Uh, please feel free to um, let us know uh, what do you think. Uh, I'll try to improve on my pronunciations. <laughs> thank you. So um, thank you for uh, staying with us for the last one hour and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. See you. Thank you, Sharon. See ya. See you.